feel I must mention by listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice or consultations with your healthcare professionals. We're here to share stories and give hope. Please consult your own physician for any medication questions or medical issues that you may be having. Our bodies are uniquely ours and something that may work for one person may not necessarily work for you. Welcome to the Meneers Me's podcast. I know it's been a while since the last episode aired with that dizzy girl, Christine. Uh, you may or may not know that I accepted a remote position and continue to work and do interviews, and it kind of amped up my vestibular symptoms. So I decided to take a step back from social media and interviews for a bit, just enough so I could get acclimated to working. As I found my footing, I began to realize I was missing something. Well, it was you guys, the podcast, the interviews, the guests, and connecting with all the Meneers Muse podcast besties. I miss it. I miss you. So we are back and we'll begin having some new fresh faces and more inspiring stories from vestibular warriors and other chronic illness warriors as well. So which leads me to today's guest. If you've been following Meneers Muse for a while, today's guest may sound familiar. Her name is Sarah. She was the very first guest in season one, episode two. And then in season two, Episode 27, we flipped the tables for an emotional interview where Sarah interviewed me and I shared my story. So that brings us to today. It's our very first episode of season three. Yay! Can you believe it? Season three already? So Sarah is back to share her Meneer's journey in 2023 when she unexpectedly went bilateral. Thank you listeners for being here and you are the reason we do this. How are you feeling now today after you ran your errands and stuff? Yeah. So it wound up, my yeah. ear turned on yeah. and like all the phantom noises came. And then I just, now my attitude is like, mm, okay, it's here. It's here and it'll go away eventually. And I'm just going to keep kind of ignoring it. Yeah. Um, so like, I know you're here, but I know you're going to be gone soon. And then I did my last errand, which I had to go to the pharmacy and, um, it started to go away, but then I got back in my car and it started to rev up again. I'm like, you're revving up with my car. And so I got home and my husband's like, hi, he said, how are your errands? And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm like my ears turned on, but then it started to go away. And it's kind of just like, even it, it's there, but it's not like so severe. Um, yeah. But when it gets really, really severe, then the right my right ear has like sympathy. It's like, it has compassion for my newly infected oh. ear. So when it starts to get full, my right ear, I'm like, no, stop. One oh. ear is all I can manage. But no, like it's just, but it's so different from like just my attitude and how I hand, not that I had a yeah, bad I have to tell you, I'm sitting here watching you talk and I could just, it just, it's too early to start crying. <laughs> Because I'm so you're like radiating and I'm so happy to see you in this place, <laughs> knowing where you were six months ago. It was just so heartbreaking to be by your side and, and going through that with you and knowing where you are today, because I knew you were going to come through it, but it was just like, gosh, when is this going to happen? God, please give her some peace and, and just let's get to the other side. Aww. And um, so that's why I was so excited about coming on because I know where you are. I know what you went through this past year going bilateral. Yeah. And I know that there are so many other people um, that question what it's like. And everybody's a little different because I am bilateral. However, m when I um, started this journey, that's when I found out that I, I wasn't unilateral. I was actually bilateral. So I've always been bilateral. It's a tough journey. And I appreciate you being here and sharing your vulnerability. And can we backtrack the beginning of last year and when this all started and let's just talk about it take a deep dive yeah and get the tissues i know we're both like that I know oh you I, I, already read. <laughs> well i've cried so many tears in 2023 and i'm a crier to begin with so it's like i kind of feel <laughs> like the like the washcloth has been like 
really squeeze drive. Right. Like I, but you did get me teary when you got teary because yeah, you saw me in a place I never thought I'd ever be. I was, you know. So I guess I'll just start with, um, you know, that I had been unilateral with Meniere's disease for um, close to 30 years when you and I met at, yeah. over social media. Then I wasn't really, uh, like I was at a place where I was able to just to handle being unilateral because it was th almost 30 years. And my, mm -hmm. my vertigo, all my attacks, like they just fizzled out and my my hearing kind of plateaued and I had gotten a hearing aid. And, but then um, like a year after I got my first hearing aid, the, the one from my original ear, my audiologist said, you know, you have a little bit of loss in your, le in your left ear. Um, why don't we just, let's balance you out so it doesn't confuse. Like she goes, I should have given you two to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I'm glad she gave me the second hearing aid because it just, I, did, I felt more balanced because she, she knows Meniere's disease very well and she knows the progression of it. And she's, mm -hmm. when she noticed the hearing loss, a part of me, like the small hearing loss in like the good ear, my good ear, mm -hmm. she knew, oh, my bad ear is making some weird sound now. I wish everyone could hear it. Be like, yeah, this is what it is. <laughs> it's, going, ooh, ooh, ooh. it's like singing to me. Um, <laughs> um, so I think she was like, okay, here we go. Sarah's starting to go bilateral. So that was like five years ago where I always reference going bilateral as like a year ago, because that's when it like w was like whammy, drastic loss. And I do. And so doing a lot of retrospective stuff and trying to figure out like, when did this really all begin? I think it really is going bilateral have been very slowly for about four or five years. Um, Cause I, I can remember hearing like crackling in good ear, which right. is what I heard in my original ear in high school when I would sing in choirs. So in high school, I think I was starting to get Meniere's disease because I would get crackles when I would sing. And I'm right. like, what the heck is this crackling sound? And then when I was 21, that's when I woke up in a vertigo attack. And I would, I had like, you know, um, just your very typical like textbook, Meniere's disease, unilateral Meniere's disease. And so I think I was kind of just in denial, just being like, oh, you know whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of poo-pooed it. Every time I went to get my hearing checked, my left ear, she said, oh, it's changed a little bit, which is like code for you've lost some more hearing, Right. <laughs> which I'm so yeah. naive. Like, I just like, like, I'm really good at just denying. I'm just like, oh, it's just changed. It's just different. Like it's there. Yeah, right. it's different. Like, like, <laughs> um, so, so that was, you know, but it was small changes. So she would adjust my left ear, which is the, the new, the new ear. And then last winter, uh, when I turned 50, we went to, my husband and I went to Turks and Caicos and it's the first time we've ever been away from our kids, you know, cause we have two with autism and they were, it was, it was tough to like go two of the three, you know, special needs. It was like our second honeymoon around like close to our 20th anniversary. And I remember I just wasn't hearing well. Like I just, it, it was, there was something going on. And then in, then the winter just came and I'm like, God, this is a bad winter. Cause winters were always so bad. Um, anyway, for my right ear, for the original year, I was, I was on this, path to become a bar instructor at the, our local YMCA. Like I mm -hmm. really found my, like my, my exercise people, like, and I love bar because it's so, it's very ballerina like, and I always loved being a ballerina when I was little. And I was like, so it was something very different than I did. Like my whole life, I was very, like, I was such a jock and like just tomboy and everything. And so 
and then it, it was the best way for me to be in shape. Like I know jumping up and down because I have this other really rare back condition. Um, you know, I have it. name the bad, the really weird, <laughs> unusual, like chronic illness or condition. Right. And just bring it on. Yeah. So I was, and and I had people in the class say like, oh, that are you should be an instructor. Or like you, you know, like you're really good. Like, and at this point, like my kids are getting older and my second one's going off to college. My third one's, you know, he's, he's on the spectrum and he's getting more independent and he's not needing me. Like, so being a mother changed. So I was really like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Like I'm going to train to be a bar instructor and I'm going to teach at the Y and like, Everyone kept saying, they're like, oh, we're, we can't wait to go to your class, like, because you're going to be so fun and funny and, and, um, to do something that I really love. And anyway, mm -hmm. liter I literally, it, I was, it was like a few days before I took like the class where you get certified. Right. I had taken another class and I was driving home and it's a, it's really just a, a fog. I don't really remember it, but by the time I got home, mm -hmm. I was like wailing in like, not in pain, but I was like, what is happening to me? Like, because at that, at some point within that day, I don't know if it was like the, during the exercise class or right after I had a sudden and drastic loss of hearing in that ear that was, had a hearing aid, but was very, very slowly losing hearing. So in April, I can't remember what the day is, but it just was like, whoosh, like just Meniere's came in and was like, I'm taking it. I'm taking it all your low frequency hearing. And, and it was so drastic that my, I just, my brain went into in the auditory nerve, like went into this fight or flight state. And when that happens, when, when it's in that trauma state, it's like, where did my hearing go? Where did, where did the hearing go? Where did it go? So was it like, was it like a, a fluctuation, but it never returned? Is that what it felt like? It, I had, I had never had fluctuations before. Oh, really? And if I had, they were before I even got my first hearing aid oh. and I don't really remember. So every time that happens to me, I don't know if there's any Meneerians out there that have that, that fluctuation. Whenever it happens, I stop dead in my tracks because the, I don't hear anything. It's just, it's a normal tone, regular life. And then whomp, silence. Yeah. And it's just like, everything stops. And I'm like, okay, come on back, come on back, come on back. Sometimes it's just for seconds. Sometimes it's for minutes and then it'll come back. And every time it, I'm reminded I have many ears, you know, and I'm wondering if there's, um, if I'm losing more of my hearing each time that happens, I don't know. I need to read into that and find out what that's all about. What's happening when that happens. Well, yeah, but now that I'm bilateral, yeah. my, I do experience, um, hearing fluctuations and there do. They, they are, um, happens when my ear gets turned on and I have mm -hmm. all those phantom sounds and just to finish mm -hmm. that thought from, um, yeah. before, so, so the listeners can understand or the watchers, cause it's on YouTube, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Both. yeah. <laughs> right. It's different from the last time. So the, in the absence of hearing and it creates the brain, the beautiful brain that we have, mm -hmm. like this, this amazing thing, this God made, you know, like creates its own sound, almost like if my arm was cut off, it grew in another limb, you know? Phantom, yeah. So, but my brain created wackadoodle sounds. <laughs> like it, it didn't create like actual sound. Mm -hmm. It created sound like, it was making up its own sound and the sound was maddening. And that's mm -hmm. why I was like wailing. It was, it was louder than all heck. And there was so much pressure and my right ear was, my good ear was like having sympathy pains. So it, it kind of joined the party. So, oh, no. so, 
So both ears were like, mm -hmm. but it was like different. I have different phantom sounds in my left ear than I do in my right ear. Mm -hmm. um, and this old ear, this old geriatric Meniere's ear right. and this new baby Meniere's ear. Um, and this, this one gets triggered very easily by going out and running errands, which I did this morning. Mm -hmm. I had to return something from Christmas. I haven't gotten a chance to do that. And I was in a store and there was music playing and the woman, the gal behind the register was somebody that, a, a mother that I had known from when our children were in elementary school. And um, she recognized me. And, and so we just got chatting and by the time, I think that's why I started, it started to turn on because mm -hmm. just, uh, there was only one, it was music and then talking to her. And that was a trigger. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest triggers I have. And it stinks because, it, uh, you know, that's, it kind of keeps me more homebound, you know, like, cause right. I, I, if I can, I'll go for a walk with a dog, you know, being outside in nature is, is better. But right now I try to avoid situations that involve auditory sounds in addition to listening to people talk and me talking as well. Um, and forget it. If there's like three people in a room, mm -hmm. you know, especially my sons who are all like men now and they're all like, they, their voices are so loud and so deep yeah. and, and it really, I'm like, like, and, and I don't let them in on the fact that they're like, I want to hear them talk. Like right, I want to hear right. how, how school is. I want to hear, I want to be this present mother. Mm -hmm. And so I just suck it up. And, uh, but that's how it happened. And I actually wrote just last week, um, I finally wrote out like the story of going bilateral and it's not one that I, I'm not sure I will, it's almost like an, a part two to the one that I, that's in the dear I'm mm -hmm. in ears. Yeah. Um, my story's on page 13 and 14. I feel like 14 and a half. 14 and three quarters, I could like yeah. put in my part two, um, mm -hmm. in that book, but it's, it's raw. It's a raw write up, but it was really therapeutic that I did that. It just, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I just started to write about it. I was writing, mm -hmm. actually I was writing about what I posted yesterday on Instagram. Yeah. Which is like how which is like more of the positive. Like I really want to do that on my Instagram account. Uh, baby steps. So it's, yeah. I just want to be more of like a beacon of hope and it's like a part of a community, a positive, hopeful community. That's what I, I want to do now, now mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm in a better place. I can't say that I'm all better. Like, will I ever be all better? I don't know. Yeah. Right. You know, but um, at least I can, like, I never thought, I was like, my life's over. I'm never going to be on Heather's podcast again. I'm never going to start up my, my own podcast ever again. I'm never going to ever be, where I, I was just in a, you know. You were in a bad, bad place. I mean, <laughs> and, but you were, you had difficulty talking on the phone. Um, texting was a challenge. I mean, right. it, it's been a it's rough so year. It sucked. And I'm yeah, on the I outside. Forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot about yeah. Heather, that I couldn't tolerate the sound of my own voice. I had to wear earplugs mm -hmm. before I got the, it took me a couple months to get in to see my audiologist. She's like, where right. have you been? She's like, yeah. you went bilateral two months ago. You should have come the next day. But I'm like, I couldn't, I was like, my my husband was wanting to send me to the loony bin because yeah. I was, and my parents came over and they're like, yeah. "What do we do?" And I was scaring myself and everyone. And um, no, I remember everybody whispering at at the beginning. I I remember so vividly, and it's like, God, I, I felt so bad because there was what nothing I could do, just be there, you know. And to watch you go from such a vibrant person to having the symptoms like we deal with to just just 
crashing down into that darkness again. And it was, um, it was so hard. It was so hard. I mean, I think that back then at the beginning of the last year, I think you really thought you were stable and this is the way, okay, we're just going to ride this roller coaster. It's just, a, but then all of a sudden, um, a surprise came out of nowhere. Yeah. It's just, um, and, and my story's so unique to everyone, yeah. like anyone else, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't ever go bilateral. We've been um, talking for a few years now, and I and I, I know I've experienced a lot of things alongside you, but I don't remember the whispering being so bad that you couldn't talk on the phone, that everybody had to really leave your world. And yeah, um, yeah. how long yeah. did that last? It felt like forever. Um, I know. It's been pretty recent that it's kind of, it feels like it's fizzling out, mm -hmm. kind of like how my vertigo attacks fizzle out after, yeah. I think, 17 years or something. But again, that was progressive. It progressively fizzled out. It wasn't like one right. day I just stopped having attacks. It was like they got shorter and like um, not as severe and... Mm -hmm. I could kind of control them. I could stop them from happening. Like that's, it, that's what's, I guess the benefit of somebody like me who's had Meniere's disease for all these years, for three mm -hmm. freaking decades, that things change. Your symptoms change. At least for me, they, they changed. Um, like they changed when I stopped drinking 12 years ago. They got better. My symptoms got mm -hmm. better in my one ear. And when... I stopped drinking coffee six months ago. I noticed my symptoms started to get better, but I will occasionally just have a little cup of coffee and I'll notice like a little pressure in my ear just a little bit. Yeah. So I'm very careful. Like I'm, but I'm like, oh, I drive right down to donuts. I'm like, I want that. That's what I want. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me ask you something because I know somebody out there is thinking it. Um, when you just said that when you start having vertigo, you know how to stop that. Can you clarify that a little bit more? Um, well, so what was happening over time um, with my vertigo um, and dizziness and all that, <clears throat> like I started to learn that first I'd get the sound out of my right ear, the pressure, the fullness, and that was, oh my gosh, an attack is coming. Okay. Um, which I think I've heard, I've heard from other people too, like they get the, mm -hmm. the pressure and the sound and all that. And then like I would just lay down and then have the attack. And that's after many years. In the beginning, it was like, wow, uh, barf, you know, <laughs> anxiety like, and all that. Yeah. yeah it like, <laughs> it. It's like, right. again, and it's very vague, but when I felt like I started to control them is when they were really, I think at that, we're, we're going to fizzle out for you, Sarah, we're going to give you a gift here, you mm -hmm. know, the, it was during that stage. And so that's when I learned about the crystals in mm -hmm. your, in the ear, in, in your head, whatever that go with your balance and is a whole vestibular thing. So whenever I started, I'm like, I was, I was, I was away from home and I was somewhere and that that's always like a big stressor, right? When we're away and we're like, right. shit, I don't want to get an attack while I'm away. And all of a sudden like the pressure, but that what I had learned to do is like, okay, just calm, just chill out. And I'd lay down on my back. And because what was happening, that's right. What was happening is like, I, f I felt like I was on the, about to get an attack. And I'm like, when is it going to come? When is it going to come? And I'd go for like sometimes weeks and mm. I'd have pressure in my head that was so bad for weeks. And then that's when I realized that that's when I had some power because when I laid down on my back and I did these vestibular exercises, I caused myself to have some vertigo. And it wasn't like, I mean, it was, God, I've been through so many bad attacks. I could, it was so easy to manage. Like I was laying down and one side was always like more sensitive to spinning if I turned it a certain way. So I would, I would lay in my head and the pressure would be there. I'd lay it fl flat on my back. I'd turn my head to the right 
and I would stay there until I started to have vertigo. And then I would stay there until the vertigo stopped. Hmm. And then I would put my head up. I would just lay down and keep it straight and see if I caused vertigo. If I did, I would just wait it out. Usually I didn't in the straight, but, but then I turned to the left and then vertigo would start and I would stay there until the vertigo just stopped. And I remember my eye, my eyes would be like, oh, like, you know, yeah. as I was like spinning. Have you ever been diagnosed with BPPV? No, because, no. you know, I wasn't going to an ENT for such a long time because the ones that I had back in like the late nineties were like, mm -hmm. treating me like guinea pigs. So anyway, so that, that is what helped me to feel more in control. Mm -hmm. And then after I was done, I kept doing that. And it's, I did it until I was no long, not spinning any longer, get up and the pressure would be gone. That's so interesting. And now that's not going to work for everybody out there because no. <laughs> yes. we're all no, so, so individual. I, I, yeah. I hope it does for everybody out there, <laughs> but, but it, um, it, it's, it just equal, I equaled out the crystals in my head or something. I'm like, mm. well, that's what, that's what I was told by one of the ENTs. So, mm. um, that's interesting. That was toward, yeah, that was towards the end of having any kind of vertigo at all. And then sometimes like, it, and that it, so it was gradual over time. And then like, I, I would go get my hair done and I'd put my head back, be like, Whoa, like, okay, wait, I've got to sit up. And I'm like, I haven't had that in a while. Sorry. And they're like, Oh, what's wrong? I'm like, Oh, I have this thing called Meniere's disease, but yeah. you know, it doesn't really bother me except I'm the same way. Yeah. So it was like, I'd be in like this felt like I was in somewhat of a remission and then, and then some kind of vertigo would happen. And then but then just over time, I, like I had a good amount of time with, and I still, I don't have any attack with going bilateral, no attacks, no dizziness, nothing. And I am on Cirque mm -hmm. for the first time. I wish I had had it back in the late nineties, but yeah. um, I, at this point, my ENT and I agree that, you know what? it might be helping to keep you from having any more vertigo attacks or have them start up again. So, so the Cirque, I just feel more comfortable continuing. Sure. Um, in case I start to, you know, my body wants to have vertigo and I've got the Cirque there that I can always increase if I start to have vertigo again. Mm -hmm. I hope I don't, but, um, What's the biggest change in your life um, since you've gone bilateral, as far as as your as far as your vestibular symptoms? Besides, I know the hearing loss is obvious, but are there other other symptoms that are predominant that weren't there before? Distorted hearing, um, and then complete like loss of hearing in my mm -hmm. in my le left ear and my right ear, like it like if I'm having symptoms, like if my ears are turned on with all the phantom sounds mm -hmm. and I take out my hearing aids, like I literally can't hear my husband talking to me who's like 10 feet away. So the hearing, the, the hearing loss is mm -hmm. really um, what I find is impacting my life considerably and the inability to understand language in groups of people. So if I, if I'm at like a Christmas party with family, it's nearly impossible to understand. Um, I'm always like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah. then I, I'm looking at their lips and I'm trying to be like subtle about how I can't hear a word they're saying. And a lot of the times I'm just like, Oh, if they're smiling, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And I, it's, you know, I do the best I can. And, but if it's something that I'm like, okay, this is like an important conversation that somebody wants to have. I'm like, do you mind if we just move into this other room? So right. I can hear every single word you're saying. Right. And, and also another big loss, but I don't know if it's going to be a loss anymore is the loss of hear of hearing music. Like, mm. 
music, like music is my life. Like it's my husband's life. Like music is what brought us together. Um, and Have you been able to go listen to him play recently or any of that? I, I haven't gone to see him play. Uh, he's in a singer in a band and he um, sings in a very loud band. They do cover stuff and they sing out at, at bars and weddings and other venues and stuff of that nature. But I, I haven't, even before going bilateral, mm -hmm. it was way too loud. Like the ringing that it would leave in my ears, I couldn't tolerate. Like it was just, it was too much. And, and he understands. But yeah, like if I were to... It was, it was, I think in May, so April, I went bilateral May or June. I was on my laptop and I pulled up Spotify because I'm like, oh, I just, you know, we've been whispering. And I think it was around the time when whispering was kind of like, I didn't really need to whisper that much anymore. And mm -hmm. I pulled up Spotify and I, I have like a list of my favorite songs, you know, that we all do. And Queen of Hearts is... <laughs> Well, I by Juice Newton, Juice Newton, right? Is that her name? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm da I'm aging myself right now. Because, <laughs> I'm right there I'm, with you. <laughs> yeah. So I turned, I started playing it, and I was like, "Do I have the wrong song on? Like, this is oh. weird." And I, I like, I was listening, listening, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then it all like kind of, I was like, doo, 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 like you picture like all like the math equations going on over my head and realizing that, wait a minute, I have all this low frequency hearing loss in both ears now. Mm -hmm. So this, the good ear no longer can carry, like can, can hear all the, all that this ear can't hear. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to Queen of Hearts, but uh, and all the harmony part, uh, everything was harm. I, I couldn't hear, so it didn't sound like the song. Mm. And I'm like, wait a minute, let me put, I'm going to put, put my phone, listen to it through my hearing aids still. And I just like, that was one of my biggest grief experiences last year of like the loss of going bilateral and the losses that we experience when we, when we, when we get Meniere's disease and then we get, go bilateral, when like the, 2% of the 5% of people in the world who have mm -hmm. unilateral Meniere's, like literally it's like 2% of the 5%, I don't know, it's something very, very small um, that people go bilateral. I I realize that this is what it, life is going to be like. I'm not going to be able to ever listen to music again. And um, that's when I had to deal with a lot of like my PTSD, uh, not dealt with from the first time, you know, because that was a traumatic experience as well. And all the experiences after that one, that was, that's when I started to see um, a therapist who specializes in EMDR therapy. Um, and I used her, we worked together until I'm like, this is too much. Like I, like I need to move. And, and she, she's all for that. She's like, okay, great. Bye. So call, call me when you need me. You know, like she's awesome. Right. And I told my best friend, my best friend, Karen, who uh, she and I talk every day, probably a lot of times, twice a day, like in the beginning of the day, the end of the day, and we leave each other. It was voice memos, but then we were like, we miss each other's faces. We live a town apart. We leave, we record videos for each other. And um, I told her one day, I said, <clears throat> so I think I'm starting to be able to hear music again. I don't know why, but I think I have an idea and it was around Thanksgiving and it was around the time I started this new supplement. Now don't go crazy <laughs> because <laughs> it may not be because of this, this combination of supplements mm -hmm. that I take, but I take B1 and niacin, um, a certain amount of each along with like a slew of other ones, which I have pictured on my Instagram account. The reason why B1 and niacin uh, I started to take is because I, I did a lot of research on YouTube about Meniere's and what people do for Meniere's and that, and I was thinking about what should I try new things I want to like look into. And this guy was saying that 
those two supplements were used on like 25 people with Meniere's disease back in the 1940s. Hmm. And it relieved them of their symptoms, like 90%, 95, some really high percentage of the group of Meniereans. That's a new word you just taught me. Today. <laughs> um, a word I coined. <laughs> yeah, experienced like mm -hmm. improvement, like meaning wow. things were going away. And so I'm like, I'm just going to try it. And the the wind tunnel sound, the, the ear turning on and like sounding like, and all the pressure and the feeling like I'm up in an airplane that's extra loud. You know, like, you know, that when the airplane is going up and it's really loud, yeah, my, that's my fa that's my phantom sound. Mm. Um, among other like things, they're like, Ear! and then sometimes I even hear like music, like circus music. It's like so weird, and yeah, it's a thing though. It is a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm certifiable at this point. <laughs> I looked it up and realized no, it's a thing. Like people are like, yeah, yeah. your jazz music. I'm like, oh my god, okay, this is so wild. And I think we we as humans have the power to make any sound turn it into a soothing sound like this is a soothing sound it's not a yeah. maddening sound i'm going to redefine these phantom sounds now that i'm kind of gotten i've gotten through the mental anguish and the me just feeling like so blindsided like my whole life was just ripped out from under me feeling mm -hmm. Now that I'm beyond that, like I'm beginning to be like, wait a minute, I've done this before. I can get, I can get through it again. I can turn, like turn it down. That makes so much mm -hmm. sense to me doing. And I'm so grateful that I don't have to worry about having an attack while I'm running an errand. Right. I do know that I'm like going to get really tired because I, mm -hmm. I get very tired just doing normal everyday things. Like I'm going to go to bed probably at four o'clock today. We do. We're only dealt a certain amount of spoons a day. And with these vestibular symptoms, man, I wear out very quickly and it's, it's hard. You really have to piecemeal your energy. Oh yeah. 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 It, it's, um, and today, and I'm grateful that today is a day that I can hurgle, like, like I'm hurgle. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. Herkel, I mean, that was insane. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to use that all the time now. And I'll, and I'll um, put down like. Girl, someone who introduced me to that word. And, <laughs> and then I saw it on the news this morning. I mean, yesterday. I'll put site, I'll put site reference, Heather Davies. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>
any semblance of a life that like is like it was before. And like, it just stopped me in my tracks. It, the life of my, this beautiful life that this, like we're out from under me and mm -hmm. so much was wrapped into that. And I, I really want to really, really want to convey how serious my past trauma was wrapped up in all of this. Mm. Um, I'm not quite sure if I would have gone to a place of, I don't want to exist on the planet and mm -hmm. say that like every day. Right. Um, had I dealt with the trauma, but I, I didn't know how to, like, I didn't know about EMDR therapy. Right. Um, and I had a, a lot of other traumas in my life having nothing to do with Meniere's disease that were also getting triggered, like getting triggered because of going bilateral. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. But my EMDR therapist, she helped me. EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing is an evidence-based therapeutic treatment that can be highly effective with those with a trauma history. It consists of an eight-phase treatment, during which a therapist and client work together through specific memories, negative thoughts, beliefs, and emotions, while engaging in those of alternating pulsers, tappers, buzzers, even visualization exercises of bilateral stimulation. Some of these may not be appropriate for vestibular patients, so be certain to share your triggers openly. Some people who have recently encountered a trauma may not be ready to process their trauma so this may not be the correct treatment for them. Please speak with your therapist to see if EMDR would benefit you. So I have to share that that is something that was a huge part of 2023 for me was mm -hmm. addressing my anger and my grief um, about not only going by, not just going bilateral, but mm -hmm. having Meniere's disease, like having it like getting it when I was 21, like when my, my life started. So what I was doing is every time I would get the symptoms, I would have, it would be a trauma response, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I feel like, I don't know if everyone has the kind, like anyone else who goes bilateral, say they've never had any trauma in their lives. Mm -hmm. If they went bilateral, would they have been like, for me, it was like a mental, mm -hmm. like, hell mental and emotional hell of re like tr certain traumas would pop into my head or i would start to feel like i i don't matter in this world and that's why that's why i got mm -hmm. that's why i went bilateral that's why i got meniere's disease like god doesn't want me here i'm the i literally was convinced that the devil was inside of me like cursing my life away um, and like punishing me for anything bad that I might've said when I was like five or 25 or whatever, or done, you know, like any little or big thing. Um, and I just, you know, it, it was mm -hmm. spiraling. I was just spiraling yeah. and it wasn't helping my symptoms. So right. she was trying to teach me how to get through the identified traumas that would help support me being able to just function um, and cope with and manage in a calm, in a calm way whenever my ear got turned on. Yeah. The, the last time I had a trauma response, um, I wrote it all out. I drove, I got in my car and I drove like half an hour away and I sat in the parking lot of some bank on some highway and I wrote out five pages. And when I was done, I drove home and I literally felt, I know some people are gonna be like, she is such a weirdo. <laughs> I literally felt the devil leaving my body and God re-entering. I don't think the devil was ever there. It was always mm -hmm. 
just my, just God was not, I had turned my back on God mm -hmm. because I felt, and I, I have a, I have a very, I'm, you know, a very spiritual person and God has saved me before from death. <laughs> and after writing that letter, I was saved again. Just the act of writing that letter. It was, it was some divine intervention. And I felt like I, that's when I felt like this calm, this calm kind of come over me became great. And like, and that was around the same time that I started the niacin and the B1. <laughs> my, my, my sweet, sweet husband was like constantly doing research. Like most of those supplements are because of him. The right. only two that are there are because of my own research, the niacin and the B1. And, but so I, so I do that now. Like I'm, I, I'm allowing myself more grace and I'm, and I'm not, I don't, I don't feel sorry for myself anymore. I'm just like, this is okay. So this is the cards I was dealt, but I, but that's, that's the journey. That was my journey. Obviously, like everyone is here. I, everyone who was born on this earth is meant to be here, no matter how you were born. Like that's, I, I believe, I believe that for everyone, but for a lot of 2023, I felt like I did not fit into that category. Um, so I, I, I'm far away from that now. Like I'm, I feel like I, I slipped away for a long time and could have been longer, yeah. but I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm so, happy. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here and thank you for sharing. You've come a long way over the last year and, and I like seeing your little glowing face and your hair is curled and you have makeup on and you look so lovely. <laughs> you, like you are one of the, there have been a handful of people who had my back and they, they were mirrors to me. Um, and I needed, some, some were mirrors, you were a mirror and I needed a mirror. Others were, you know, did other things and held me my husband like just held me all the time yeah I'm like that you can't do anything else for me you can't there's nothing else that will work just just to hold me and um you were consistently you you were you the the you i always that i that i met and i really like <laughs> was like she's gonna be my friend i <laughs> i love this woman like so silly. and and you thank you <laughs> <laughs> for believing in me and ha and holding on to that hope and praying for me when I could not literally could not do that for myself at all, yeah. which is something that I've, I'd never experienced in my past, the hurdles that I had been through in my past. I'm like, I can do what I can get. Yeah. And this was different, but you were one of the, the couple that were like, we're going to hold on to hope for you. Mm hmm I'm going to pray for you when you can't do it for yourself. And, yeah. and I will forever, what's the word? Okay. I'll be, I know you'd be there for me I will too. forever be <laughs> You're doing your service. Anything you need. <laughs> I think, you know, that's one thing about this community. And, um, and for those of you that haven't heard Sarah's story, I'll have to post the episode before, but, or even how, even the first episode of this, I mean, you're the reason I, do the podcast and spread this awareness is because of you. So you brighten my world and I wouldn't be here doing these things or met so many wonderful vestibular warriors if it wasn't for you. So, you know, it's divine intervention. I, I really think, you know, those two or three hours I sat on the deck of the boat talking to you right before, I think it was right before COVID. I don't even know when it was. Um, you know, they, they changed, shifted my world too. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So much so like you, <laughs> Like, I didn't even realize just how like ingrained you are into this world, this vestibular world and how much you do. Like when you were, you're like, look at this show. I'm going to, I'm going to be on TV, this documentary and like all this. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is she? Oh my God. Like, and, and so like you, again, like that, yeah. Divine intervention. Yeah, and for sure. 
you're so good at it. You're like, you're so good at being the person you are and inspiring people to just <laughs> just <life>. guess. <laughs> Hang on to that hope. Yes, yes we'll get through it. Life. Like life you, is hard. We're gonna get through it. <laughs> yeah. Like you literally, I literally, like you feel like, I feel like you're like Mama Meniere's, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll change my name and, and when I turn 60 to Mama Meniere's. <laughs> <laughs> of course, by then it could be Grandma Meniere's. <laughs> <laughs> That's <was> funny. <laughs> oh, girl. Well, I, I love you. And thank you so much for taking All time right. today. I mean, when we were talking and we're like, you know, I got to record this because people need to hear what happened because going bilateral is um, scary, but you're on the other side. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess just for those of you who have watched this, who've gotten to the very end, I, I really hope that, I hope this gave you hope. I, I by no means came on wanting to like scare anyone with my story, no. um, but it is, my truth it is it is what happened and and um if you're and i needed i needed to be honest with people and i needed to hear people being honest with me and i i had to be willing to try things even though i was like this is not gonna effing work mm -hmm. and and I ha and I I had to admit when I was feeling really depressed and having terrible anxiety and needing and needing medication like no shame there's no, no shame in that so if you're struggling emotionally and mentally with this horrid condition let others help you and t tell your truth to your loved ones and and ask for help say this is this is what i need i did i don't like this ent this ent makes me feel is like condescending to me like really be in touch with like who right. like the specialist like get the that's why i list in my that post like an exceptional exceptional ENT, an exceptional you, audiologist. Yes, you deserve, you deserve the best and one that yes. makes you feel comfortable and heard. You need to yes. be heard. Yeah. My ENT and my, my specialists, they were rowing the boat of hope for me when I couldn't do it for myself. Right. They were like, you're coming back in two weeks. You're coming mm -hmm. back because they're, we're doing something else next because you're going to get through this. And right. I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, we'll see you. They, they just ignore <laughs> my, my like my just like whatever you know but <laughs> yeah yeah so if if you don't like one of the specials you have find another mm -hmm. reach out to the people here on in like in the social media world veda um and yeah. and ask for help and like where can i find like a specialist who's going to have a good bedside manner, who's going to really listen to my story. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I said to my ENT, I've had this for 30 years. Diuretics do not work. Do not put me right. on diuretics. And he said, mm -hmm. okay. And then like five months later, I'm like, maybe I'll try it. Like, <laughs> <"Okay."> right. <laughs> and I did, yep. and it didn't work because I, right. I have low blood pressure and mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't be on diuretics because you know, anyway. <laughs> So anyway, I could go yeah. on and on. Really just yeah. love yourself, love yourself enough to be willing to do whatever it takes to get to a place where you're, 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 you're you can be like, okay, this is the, this is what I have. I'm just going to, yeah. whatever the day offers me, I'm just going to roll with it. It might be yeah. a day, Hercule, Lurkle whatever. <laughs> Herkle Durkling. Herkle Durkling. Yeah. And or, embrace it. Yes. Yeah. And embrace it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's the last thing I'm going to say. <laughs> and I love you all. I love you all, Meniere's Warriors. <laughs> and we love you, Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your heartfelt story. You are definitely a beacon in the community and your strength continues to inspire me. If you would like to connect with Sarah or myself, please find the ways to do so below. 
Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. If you've made it this far, I'd like to thank you again for being here. It's because of you that we continue to share these stories and connect with so many of you. Our community is growing every day, so be sure to be that person you needed at the beginning of your journey. Now, right around the corner is Life Rebalance Live. It's a live conference that will be held the first week in March, Monday through Friday, beginning at noon, with a panel of professional vestibular providers discussing certain topics, followed by a patient panel. And um, myself and Patrick will be moderating this panel. The patients will be sharing their experiences on the same topic. So be sure to register at www.vestibular.org forward slash LRL. One final question, I'll let you go. Have you discussed your vestibular disorder or symptoms with your employer? I would love for you to leave me a voice message at www.speakpipe.com forward slash Meniere's Muse. That link is below also. I'll share the responses in future episodes. If you would like more information on vestibular disorders, please reach the vestibular.org website and make vestibular visible. Remember to love and be gentle with yourself. Lean on this beautiful community and remember that healing is possible. I'll see you soon, warriors.